from the first movie, and they'll they'll know sort of some of the backstory. And then the third movie takes place from current day, and it's sort of a projection into the future, with an interesting twist. Is it already known when this movie maybe will be released? Um, we are hoping. Again, this is a completely independent film, and we we did this for a number of reasons. Number one, for complete creative control. Number two. Um, we're a special effects company, so we sort of had the wherewithal uh, to try to set a new standard for small independent films to do some things that haven't been done by a small independent yeah. film before. Um, that's the positive side. The flip side of that coin is that because we're a small independent production, we don't have hundreds of people working around the clock on this film, so it takes us a little bit longer to get it done than, than most films, especially accomplishing as much as we're trying to accomplish. We're hoping that we'll be uh, releasing it by the end of the year. The end of the year. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and then you will start the next year on Anunnaki number two. Right? right, which will be titled Anunnaki two. You stated that uh, uh, Anunnaki number two will cause a tidal wave. What makes you think it will do that? Well, the hopes is um, and again, I, I don't approach it from being sensationalist. I'm, I'm not really, I don't like to go down that alley. It's not my personality. Um, anybody who knows me knows that I'm not a sensationalist kind of a person. And I think it's sort of a, a, a hackneyed and cliche thing to do at this point. I mean, everybody's got the new thing that's, that's, uh, that, that causes the big emotional uprising in, in people. Um, I don't even have to name names. Everybody knows the next, the, the, can name off the, the top of their head a list of films that are the newest uh, outrage, I think. And, and my, my object was not to, to approach it from there. And that's exactly why I did this first one as a gentle introduction to the topic. My hopes is that people will um, truly become interested in the topic because it's, this is not made up. I mean, although the story is a fiction, um, these are texts that we've found and have been deciphered and are as credible as the biblical versions that we know. Um, they may not be as well known and they may not be as adopted as, as the biblical versions, but truly it's been found that many of the stories that we read in the Bible are actually based on these earlier stories. So if you believe in the Bible, which many people do, the majority of people do, um, it sort of stands to reason that they would then at least not be offended enough to take a look at these stories. Where the tidal wave comes in, though, is that these stories are vastly different than the biblical ones, and they've been, and they've been censored and edited in the versions that you read in the Bible um, so dramatically. And I'll give you an example. This is an interesting... You, you talked about uh, technology and, and, and such, and this is something that we came about in doing a science fiction. We try to keep as accurately to the uh, ancient Sumerian inscribings and carvings and artwork that we could find when we did the designs for the, the ships in this. Um, and, and truly, the Sumerian versions of the text call them flying machines to some degree. They had names for them. In Mesopotamia, there's carvings in the Assyrian carvings of of, uh, of the gods, they actually show them riding in these flying machines. They have names for them, landing sites for them. So what we did is we took the original carvings and we created a, a reverse engineered them, if you will, to create a working ship. And what we found out was actually extremely interesting. Um, we, while going through this with some scientists who are in the aeronautical field, we said, well, this is sort of a plausible, this is sort of a plausible design. But, you know, this wouldn't be very um, efficient for flying under cir circumstances. It would be great for flying low altitudes with the wings spread. And then I came up with the idea, well, what if we folded the wings in for other type of takeoff? We, I had gone through some Indian uh, Hindu texts um, and, and, and uh, descriptions of other types of ships from, from ancient texts. And what we found was, what we were left with when the wings came in is the stereotypical UFO. The stereotypical UFO design is what you're left with, um, which then again, of course, led us into trying to reverse engineer some of that. Is it a vertical takeoff? Is it a, 
uh, what, what's the means of propulsion? And we, we started doing a lot of these designs, and we found that the results we had were very interesting. If we look at the, the big success of the, the book The Da Vinci Code, which also became a, a wonderful movie, this is a kind of a development which y you can compare, let's say, the production of the trilogy one on Rocky, two, three, uh, maybe with the development of books coming out like the Da Vinci Code. W what do you think about that? Well, the Da Vinci Code, it, it's interesting because that uh, Da Vinci Code caused such an uprising. It caused a big stir in, in what that was about. And if you look at the, the time scale of, of Anunnaki's story and Da Vinci Code, the Da Vinci Code is actually only a small portion after what would be Anunnaki 1, this first one Anunnaki, the first movie. Um, it would really be from the time that the next movie, Anunnaki 2, ends, which is after the, the flood, there's a small portion in there which um, is, is, is where we transition from B.C. to A.D., basically. And, and, and the Da Vinci Code, that whole story, uh, encompasses from that up into our semi-modern-day civilization. Um, it leaves the whole backstory behind it um, wide open. There's, there, there's, there's thousands and thousands of years of history behind there that that doesn't even touch. So, so in, in the scope of things, it's a very controversial issue, the Da Vinci Code, but when you look at the, the scope of what we're actually talking about and the scope of time and, and the, the scope of humanity's beliefs in a, in a, in a belief system, uh, I think the story is much bigger. You know how, uh, let's say, the Christian churches, and especially the Catholic Church, reacted to the Da Vinci Code. Do you have any idea how they could react to uh, one Anunnaki, two Anunnaki, and so on? Well, yeah, I'm pretty sure I know what their reaction is <laughs> going to be. Uh, we've already been banned in the Philippines, for what I understand. We haven't even released the movie yet. <laughs> um, it, it, there, was, there was somebody who, who mentioned on one of the boards that once the movie's made, we're not allowed there. Um, uh, and I don't know if that's true or not, but, but it, it, it sort of sets the tone for, for the way it's going to be. There's a lot of controversy on the subject. I, I think that there's definitely going to be a... Uh, we're definitely going to have the, the, our share of, of uh, outcry for, for the topic in general. Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's an old saying that when people don't understand something, their tendency is to say no. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, so um, I, I'm, I'm sure we will get that. Um, but anybody who takes the time to actually look into what we're saying and look into what we're quoting, we're actually not even taking a position ourselves on what is. We're just trying to retell a story that's been, if not completely squelched, pushed under the carpet so that it's not made known. I mean, for a story that the entire Bible is, is based upon, or the majority of the Bible is based upon, the, the well-known parts of the Bible are based upon, to not be known by the majority of people is kind of an interesting phenomenon right there. Seven years ago, in the year 2000, the Secretary of Sicin, he went to Rome, and he talked there with Corrado Balducci. Eh? Maybe you know about him. I've heard about that. Yes. Now, Corrado Balducci, he says, of course, the universe, there are many civilizations all over the place. What was interesting about, I don't know if it was that conversation or a conversation that followed with the Catholic Church, was that, from what I understand, the Catholic Church had made a statement in that realm of time saying that for there to be other life on other planets would not be inconsistent with the religious precepts of the religion. Um, and, and, and that brings us to sort of another point why, to me personally, I don't really understand what the big outrage would be. Although I do understand it's almost, in, it's almost a definite thing. Um, the ancient stories of the Anunnaki talk about the Anunnaki talking within themselves about there being a greater creator. Um, which brings up another interesting point. When I first started uh, the script for this movie and when I first um, started doing some, some initial testing of what people's thoughts were, there was this big swell of people who uh, seemed to pit creationalism against evolutionary starts. And